why there is a need of time to change the perspective what wrong the perspective was and was it a wrong perspective or not for that i would like to start my topic so with my title i will be dealing with this topic in following objectives first of all anesthesiologist as a multitasking person as we all know it is a most demanding branch in the current scenario because of the i have asked many pg students and the undergraduate students also so they are also interested in anesthesiology why because in recent years last 10 years before there was so not no not so much of the fascination about the anesthesiology field but in last recent one decade because of the introduction of critical care medicine pain medicine and the advanced branches of cardiac anesthesia neuro anesthesia people are becoming more fascinated about these branches also the working pattern the dynamic city of the anesthesiologists the versatility of the nature of the anesthesiologists also become a hallmark stage in the practice of medicine post covid in post covid era recently because of the remarkable contribution by anesthesiologists it becomes a matter of uh, importance that anesthesiologists can play a role as a critical care consultants and it highlighted to the many of the because before that pre covid era critical care medicine was not so much precise or many of the other branches were not recognizing the critical care co- medicine consultant from anesthesiology but after post covid era many of the patient has recognized its value and the anesthesiologists can very remarkably and very responsibly play a role as a crit- critical care consultants in the same way the pain medicine branch is also evolving but what's happening in the crit- currently anesthesiology field many of the people who are practicing anesthesiology they are also practicing many things like immediately post graduation state when the pe- people are not too much are routine about the anesthesiology field they are a little bit confused about the, what to do next so what to do after md whether to practice general practice as a freelancer practitioner whether to practice in the academic institute whether to practice as a an intensivist whether to practice as a pain physician or any other else so to know that he must know about the current opportunities beyond the anesthesiology so when you are practicing as a anesthesiologist so there are few benefits also because you touch many of the specialties you have a lot of options open to you as an if you practice as general anesthesiologist as well as intensivist as well as pain physician in the same scenario you have got all other options open to explore in your future field but there are some drawbacks also the drawbacks are you limit your knowledge you limit your depth of knowledge also because of the lack of depth of knowledge you patients may suffer because of the, your in, inadequate knowledge you cannot give your best in some particular field so jack of all is not important so being a master of one that has got more precise role in your particular specialty so you can gain a depth of knowledge you can gain a proper precise intervention skills in that career and you will become a stand out person in a society also if you practice a one particular specialty because in a previous era in the medicine also people were practicing medicine like an cardiologist as well as diabetologist also but in current trend there are emerge super specialty branches like cardiology neurology in the same way anesthesiology will going to become a parent branch and it will explore in its future in various branches like critical care medicine cardiac anesthesia neuro anesthesia and you have to focus your practice on a particular branch because without focus you cannot give justice to your patient also you cannot gain a depth of knowledge and knowledge is a crux to give the best to your patients so keeping patients as a priority you have to become a master in a particular one scenario and at a time you can become master in only one scenario so i see what the mind is prepared to comprehend why this quote is important because your perspective is very important in all scenario the picture is same but how you see the situation that is also important so as a pain management expert how the anesthesiologists how the surgeons how the patients see anesthesiologist as a pain physician that we need to understand first so currently anesthesiologists see pain management as a if a pain person comes to you so what first thing strikes to your mind is which block i am going to give or which block i am going to administer to this patient so this is a current perspective yeah this is also a right thing because in the anesthesiology perspective acute pain management then the nerve block clinic this is also a part of a patient care only in a perioperative care the block is are very important because 
because of the post operative patient care is an integral part in the anesthesiology so this is a natural thinking of anesthesiology is also right but it is not right all the time so anesthesiologists as a perioperative pain care acute pain care is also correct thinking also there is a one concept called as a interventionist in usa there are specific clinics called as a nerve block clinics where they particularly administer only nerve block to the particular condition but that is a one perspective of a pain physician 75 percent thing are covered but what about that 25 percent that cover the chronic pain management that i will come in the later uh, of matter now how the surgeons visualize as a pain physician a patient is sent to the pain physicians for a pain management and he thinks that a pain specialist will give some block and that is okay with it so is it a right perspective of a surgeon that only giving block is only a pain management no that is not the way actually so the surgeon pain management perspective has also to be changed to change our practice and last and most important thing is a patient's perspective how the patient visualizes you as a pain physician or a pain specialist first of all patient doesn't know where to approach because many of the patients 75 percent condition they don't know whom to approach whom should i visit for my pain condition they don't know and second thing they think that why should i approach anesthesiologist because he only administers anesthesia treat the pain condition why should i approach anesthesiology that is a important question in the patient's head and that has to be answered first to generate the awareness about the pain management field. because not only awareness in the medical fraternity but awareness at the level of patient level and or a ground level is important in the for developing the branch as such so while dealing with this you have to understand what exactly is a problem of a chronic pain the global chronic pain prevalence study or statistics say that 19.3 percent of the population of indian population is suffering from chronic pain and this world health organization also estimate that 80 percent of patient with a chronic pain has a role or they have never received any adequate treatment why because many of the patients are not reported at all or many of the patient get mismanaged so where there are various conditions they in which they don't know where to approach so what are the spectrum of a condition that are covered under pain management perspective so first is a headache so there are there are a lot of gray areas between the neurologist perspective of the headache and the uh, intervention pain management perspective of a headache because headache is such a large entity that is uh, yet to be revealed because in current scenario current trends all headaches are irrationally treated as a migraine i have seen many of the patients they where they any headache they treat it as a migraine any headache they don't know or many of the patients don't go to the proper person or a neurologist for headache because they visit many general practitioners they visit any physicians and they routinely prescribe non steroidal anti inflammatory agents and they continue to take at on the over the counter basis so medication overuse headache has a lot of incidence in the current practice rather than other conditions of the headache so headache is a such a spectrum where interventional pain management has a very big role because lot of advanced interventions like occipital nerve stimulation then uh, there are spinopalatine ganglia and radio frequency denervation are also an integral and evidence based treatments in the uh, patients of which are intractably suffering from the headache or that are non responsive to the medical management then second important thing is arthritis arthritis part is a such a vast field many of the people claim to treat arthritis like right from the orthopedician's perspective to the any general practitioner of a bms or bhms level everyone treats arthritis in their own way but what we want to treat is a sign it should be of the scientific base so evidence-based medicine has gained a lot of treatments uh, they come across a lot of treatments in the evidence-based medicine like uh, we only know about the medical management and the uh, surgical management but many of the patients also and many of the clinicians also don't know the advances in the management of arthritis like a minimally invasive interventions also the regenerative medicine has a very good evidence-based it is a level one evidence in the arthritis component is concerned because arthritis is majority of the degenerative condition i'm not talking about the rheumatoid conditions of the arthritis but degenerative conditions are very good very well treated with the regenerative medicine so there are a lot of good evidences for that so and that fortunately included in our pain management branch tendinosis degeneration tendinopathy sports injuries we don't know the we are also dealing with the sports injuries like a 
frozen shoulder and tendinopathy supraspinatus tears they are also have a regenerative medicine has a good role in the treating this uh, tendinosis condition as well neuropathic com- pain component diabetic neuropathy post herpetic neuralgia then the trigeminal neuralgia or any related neuropathies they are also very well treated in the pain management so they have good and scientifically uh, revealed treatment in the pain management so this spectrum has to be considered lot of or condition like a musculoskeletal injuries and cancer pain as we all know so in this all scenario we when we are having so much of the conditions and so much of the branches or so much of the systems involved in the chronic pain conditions we cannot practice because we cannot divert our practice in other branches because we have to give a lot of time to explore these things as a pain management perspective is concerned so basically what is happening what are the outcomes of the chronic pain patient when it comes to a patient level so when a patient of a chronic pain visit some person one thing happen that is either it is under reported in because in the society in a village or ground or in the rural population lot of women society are also suffering from the chronic pain and they usually under report the condition because they have they have tendency to suffer it because it is suffering and it has to be suffered that is a tendency so it are ma- majority of the chronic pain condition are under reported second many of the condition are ignored by doctor because because of the primary care physician they used to treat the primary diseases and pain is inexplicable or pain used to come with that condition only and they usually ignore it or many of the con- times they usually label it as a psychogenic origin but one thing is clear when a patient complains of a pain he is in pain it is not a, any of the psychological condition that causes the pain many of the times the chronic pain conditions are mismanaged why because they visit either wrong practitioner or there is a wrong diagnosis or there is a wrong treatment three important things are there when you visit a general practitioner for any other condition like i have seen many patients of the headache they visit a general practitioner they get the crocin paracetamol and all they get managed temporarily but they don't have a precise diagnosis of headache so they usually get mismanaged in this condition mismanaged at the diagnosis level many of the low back pain patient usually many of the patients are suffering having the multiple conditions like some patients having a lumbar disc bulges also they are having some facet arthropathy but the pain generator is different the patient get treated for the uh, radiculopathy but they are not having any symptom of radiculopathy and they are having a low back pain only because of the my- myofascial spasm so the simple myofascial spasm they get treated for the radiculopathy so that in that way they get mismanaged and la- these all conditions lead into the vicious cycle and the vicious cycle sets in and again the mismanagement will lead to the under reporting of the pain so in that way the chronic pain patients are not at all reported at the proper level or a proper channel to the pain specialist so in the perspective at the patient level what is the con- what has to be done so we have to include our pain clinic at a, as a primary care setting rather than a referral center why because orthopedics medicine then rheumatology then neurology gynecology for that chronic pelvic pain then oncology as we all know this all forms a spectrum of a diseases and pain medicines forms a, there are some gray areas where they also can't do anything like in the you know, chronic pelvic pain the last thing has to be done is a hysterectomy but hysterectomy is not an answer for everything there are chronic pain uh, conditions which can be treated with some interventions in the pain management field so in that scenario pain medicine is a branch which covers every branch in a some sort of way and first assessing diagnosing and managing this condition in a particular way is very important because not only interventions are needed but the proper diagnosis of a condition is also needed for that condition so the patient has to be reported at the pain clinic for the first time because many of the time if you report to the pain management center and if we diagnose the condition in a proper way we can refer it to the particular specialty also in vice versa manner as the routinely patient are referred to our clinic in the current scenario but in the se- vice versa we can also refer the right patient to the right specialty also so in that scenario primary care setting development of a pain management clinic also important in the patient's perspective because that will lead to the awareness in the patient level in the society level what are the fate of the chronic pain patient in the pain man- pain clinic so either there are two possibilities one the patient come as a walk in patient come as a referral person if a patient come as a referral person we routinely know what we do we intervene but 
only intervention is not necessary. Why? Because many of the times the diagnosis may not be correct of the surgeon or pain generated diagnosis may be correct but the pain generator is different. So it has to be assessed in a proper clinical scenario. It has to be intervention if intervene if needed. So for that I will just highlight a one case because I have seen a patient of a 50 year old male with an inoperable CA pancreas with severe abdominal pain referred to a pain clinic for a precise celiac plexus block. It was referred from oncologist. So without thinking anyway, if a chronic, uh, we all know because a chronic CA pancreas patient with a severe abdominal pain, we usually uh, first thing comes to our mind is celiac plexus. So as the referral, I have administered a celiac plexus block to the patient, but there was no relief. So I have introverted myself. Why? Because the technique was correct. The drug administered was precise. So why there was no pain relief? So I have thought, rethought, and the pain was so severe that it is not covered with the even uh, high doses of morphine also. So after thinking and rethinking and after dis discussing with the patient, I came to a con conclusion that I should reinvestigate because the recent PET scan was not available three, four months before PET scan and MRI scan was available. So I have tried to reinvestigate with the CCT abdomen and surprisingly, I found a new finding because of the tumor was inoperable. The tumor was compressing both superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein also. So that was leading to the boil ischemia and that was the cause of the. So the diagnosis, patient was having CA pancreas, no doubt, but the diagnosis of a pain generator was different in this scenario. It was because of the ischemic boil pain. So I have referred this patient to an interventional radiologist because it was inoperable. So I have referred to interventional radiologist. But the radiological intervention was not also possible to the stenting of that superior mesenteric artery. Then again, he referred that patient to me. So for time being, what has to be done? I was anxious about this condition because it was not relieved on the celiac plexus. So what next? I, I am also not getting the things. So I have searched some literature, but to for time being, I have put one epidural catheter as T8 level and time being for three days, I have administered local anesthetic rupiokin to that patient to relieve or alleviate some pain. And I have rethought on this thing. Then after searching some literature, I have found out there are two in interventions that are also beneficial in the small bowel ischemia. That is our common bilateral erector spiny plane block and second is splanchnic nerve radiofrequency denervation. So I have planned both the, uh, both the intervention in the same setting. So I did bilateral e erector spiny catheter to that patient under ultrasound guidance and also I did a radiofrequency denervation of a splanchnic nerve. For that uh, surprising results, patient was having almost 70% pain relief on that. So the my thought over here is only directly going for intervention is not needed. You have to assess it, assess the pain generator and intervention has to be planned by pain management consultant only because there are a different scenario there are a different ways of pain different perspective of pain you have to consider it. and when the patient comes in as a walking patient to you the, it has to be assessed as like a primary care setting it has to be diagnosed and it has to be investigated and if it is a red flag you can refer that patient to a particular specialty. Red flag means if it is having a tumor, if it is having some uh, sort of a surgical thing. So you can directly refer to the patient concerned specialist and directly get operated for that. So that's why primary care setting is necessary. Also, I would like to highlight one case of a carpal tunnel syndrome. It was a, just a small case. A patient was posted for the bilateral carpal tunnel release. So I have just asked the surgeon, do you can we plan as a surgical release in one hand and can we plan a pain management intervention in right hand at a single single setting so he agreed for that so i did I, I have given axillary block for the anesthesia purpose for that left hand carpal tunnel release and i did a ultrasound guided dissection of a median nerve in the right hand for surprisingly immediately after hydro dissection patient got relief from that carpal tunnel pain in the right hand and he got operated on the left hand so at the end of the day surgeon also agreed that the pain management intervention is highly beneficial in that scenario so gaining the confidence of a surgeon for a proper referral because he should trust you because he is having his own patients and if you can proper assess properly intervene that patient so he can also refer your his patients to you in a proper way so in that scenario, you can change the perspective of a surgeon also. So what are the things that we need to know as an anesthesiologist 
uh, as a pain management perspective so what pain physician knows so he should possess a sound clinical knowledge about musculoskeletal imaging musculoskeletal examination like we have to go back in our undergraduate curriculum because we have learned all the uh, orthopedic examination neurological examination in undergraduate setting so we have to update that setting because in the, our curriculum of anesthesiology practice we have lost touch to the clinical examination so clinical examination is mandatory to become a pain physician second thing minimum mandatory diagnostic radiology like ultrasound is a stethoscope of a pain physician so musculoskeletal ultrasound is a diagnostic modality for a pain physician also and you can use it as an intervention modality also some sort of x-ray knowledge ct mri knowledge is also necessary for a minimum diagnostic uh, intervention because in many scenario right inter, uh, right investigation has to be advised to a right person offering mri scan to a headache patient offering CT scan to a headache patient is many of the time not necessarily. But in many settings, if a patient is having some headache and he, you, you are suspecting a cervical pathology, so you should advise a cervical MRI. So that much knowledge of a investigation has to be there for advising investigations. Then third is a precise skill for intervention. That, that is a common thing between anesthesiologists and pain physicians because anesthesiologists are skilled enough to have performed the uh, skillful intervention. So that makes a common thing for the anesthesiologist and pain physician. But for that, he must also possess uh, precise anatomical knowledge, sono anatomy and pleuro anatomy knowledge of the person so that the intervention has to be precise. So what exactly the change is needed? The thought process. Because we consider anesthesiologist as a pain physician, but the thought process is different. In As far as the anesthesiologist is concerned, our primary goal is to administer anesthesia because we evaluate our patients to administer anesthesia in the setting. But what happening in the pain physician's role, they are here to diagnose the condition. They are here to treat the condition. So the roles are different. Here we do pre-anesthetic evaluation to administer anesthesia. Here we diagnose the pain generator to treat the patient. In the anesthesiology setting, we have a post-operative intensive care, post-operative pain care also. But here we have to reassure the patient because patient come to you. So we have to reassure about the condition. You have to counsel the patient. You have to convince the patient regarding their condition they are you have to reassure you have to develop your communication skills regarding the patients and management is a different scenario here anesthesiology is always on toes out of the on the contrary as a pain physician you have to wait in the opd for the long time many of the time patient may not come to you many of the time you have a zero wait a lot of long waiting periods many of the time your opd may go as a no patient will come to you you have to wait for days and days months and months as a pain physician so patience is important as a pain physician you concerned so these are the conditions we have to consider so what are the benefits working as a pain physician so there are no emergency duties there are office office hour job you can plan your opd timing there are no night duties also because it is a supra elective branch then the, there are direct patient interaction are there so that will create your good social image because if you interact with the patient we all know the anesthesiologist role as a behind the curtain but currently the interacting with the patients, you will gain the social role also. And the social role is important in generating patients also. So the walk-in patient will come to you when you will be recognized in the society. Third is the planning your own intervention as per your convenience. That is the most important part because as an anesthesiologist, we know the surgeon have planned the case and I have to go to the case. That is a thought process. But here you can plan your own intervention as per your convenience, as per your or patient's convenience also. There is one important to start as a own setup because being an anesthesiologist you have that much uh, lacuna in your own practice that you cannot start your own setup also so opportunity to start your own setup and become a, you can develop your face value also in this pain physician setting so these are all benefits working as a pain physician for the anesthesiologist so in the last i would like to highlight something because developing a pain practice is a little bit difficult task but Recently, because of the few uh, authority bodies like uh, Indian Society for Study of Pain, Indian Society of Anesthesiology, a lot of people working on the recognition of the society. Respected Dr. Naveen Manotra sir and uh, Dr. Gautam Dasa, my mentor, they have dedicatedly worked since last two decades for the recognition of these fields. Like a formal teaching program they have developed. Recently, FNP in pain medicine, 
DM in pain medicine, the first batch of DM has passed out in last year only from the AIMS Rishikesh. Also, there are recognized fellowship are also awarded in the various setting in of the hospital setting. So the recognized formal training program has developed and many of the aspiring pain physicians are developing. There are a lot of mentors. There are a lot of people are practicing pain. So it is a good opportunity for uh, aspiring students to develop your pain management practice in the field of pain management. There is also important thing to practice pain medicine is a planning. Why? Because when you are practicing anesthesiology, you directly start your own practice. But here, the financial planning is necessary to set up your own clinic, set up your own practice. You have to promote yourself as an independent practitioner in the society as well as you have to generate patient. You have to visit various hospitals for that. So planning, uh, financial planning, business planning is also necessary to set up your pain practice. Determination, that is the integral part to start the practice. Because why? Because many of the times you didn't, don't directly get the patients. You don't get the referral immediately because recognition, your rapport towards patient, your rapport towards the surgeon is also necessary to develop your practice. So that needs patience and determinations for patients is also necessary. Dedication and devotion. As we all know, the pain management interventions are little bit skills and advanced. So dedication towards the clinical, acquiring clinical knowledge, clinical skills, and the interventional skills we need the dedication and devotion because it is a long curve you have to learn step by step for the everything also last important thing is uh, reaching the target population we if we don't know our target population we cannot develop our patients so reaching population of a chronic pain is necessary because if you directly reach to the patient then and then only the patient will come to you so keeping only on the referral practice is not the trend now currently you have to reach the population as a primary care practitioner so when you will reach the society the society will reach to you so to recognize our branch as a pain medicine as an integral branch or an independent branch these all things are necessary and in the our clinical scenario last important thing when you are practicing you have to consider one important thing whether we are doing justice with these two people because anesthesiology the perspective is different and if you are having uh, doing everything at a time you are not giving justice to these people as well as your patients also so you have to focus your practice on a particular thing to give justice to your patients so what are my take home messages so anesthesiology as a parent branch offers a stepping stone toward becoming a pain physician. Now, be the change to make the change because it is a high time. You have to start your change from ourselves to change your society. So, you have to change our perspective first to become an, you know, beyond an interventionist as a pain physician. Also, pain clinic should be promoted as a primary care unit in the chronic pain setting rather than a referral center. So, that is the need of time. Mm -hmm.